ASAP workshop, College Acceptance and Scholarship Assistance Program. We are looking forward to sharing with you just a little bit about college admissions and the young people, all the things that are necessary to get into college and to uh, get scholarships to attend college. A little bit uh, about us, our philosophy. We believe that every student can achieve. Would you agree? Every student. Every student can achieve. Uh, if they're given access to education, if they have a learning center, practical learning outcomes, and if they're respected as an individual. Also, our mission is to assist students in determining their college choice. And we know it's important because sometimes it's hard for students to figure out what college they want to go to. How was that for you? It was complicated. Choosing a good fit um, depends on your personality, what you like, don't like, the kinds of interactions you need, the size of the school, the location, the weather. All these things play a part in choosing what kind of college you would like to go to. Okay. So when you first attended uh, college, uh, was it a large, small? It was a small school. Um, I, I went to a very large high school, uh, but a small college was a great fit for me. Uh, it was located far from home, which was nice. Uh, went with uh, a couple people I knew went to the school, and it was um, a Christian environment. Okay, so Oakwood University, Huntsville, Alabama, HBCU. Yes. And just about 2,000 or less students. Yes. Okay, so that's a, a both of our alma mater. And from there, you went to uh, University of Wisconsin at Madison, and that's a large state research institution. Very large. Okay, and how many students? What, about 20 plus, 20 plus thousand 20, students? Over okay. 20,000 students. Yeah. So what we want to do is help students to find their way in their college selection process. Uh, large uh, research school, small school, Christian school, private school, public school, and just whatever have you. But the most important piece to all of this, after getting accepted, is locating the money. How do we find the money? And it's just so important to do that. And so those are the three missions that we have as an organization here at KSAP. So, uh, class, but nationally, 94% of these students who uh, engage in bachelor's degree studies will have, uh, have debt, and that's up from 45%. So, one of the reasons why we do what we do is because the debt burden, and we want to alleviate this debt burden for our students. Number two is the fierce competitiveness. What would you say about that? The competitiveness um, nationwide is, even internationally, is just amazing. Um, years ago, you could apply to school and go. Now you have to have high SAT scores or ACT scores. You have to take honors or in AP classes. You have to do summer programs. You have to be involved in community service and mission projects. It's a lot of factors that's being placed um, into your, the decision of the colleges to uh, consider you for admittance. So true, so true. And so with the growth in the number of high school students and graduates we have now, the greater interest in college, the sophisticated marketing efforts of the colleges and university, easy access to the information, the ability to apply via internet just makes this, uh, the competition to get into the schools that you want so much harder than ever before. So there are individuals out there with 4.5, 4.8 GPAs based on their AP scores and honors courses. They're looking for uh, anywhere from 1,200 to 1,600 in uh, SAT scores. And the amazing thing is, You'd be surprised, but there are actually individuals that are making perfect scores on ACTs. We've uh, run into some, and so it's amazing. And so in our state, the state of California alone, uh, the UCs attract the top 12.5% of the student population, and the Cal State Universities, the top 33%. And of course, the California community colleges are open to all and HBCUs are open to most. 
And so it's just fiercely competitive, more competitive than ever before. And so what we want to do is try to help parents and students navigate the deep waters of competitiveness that we've seen. For two parents, it was like a full-time job. Why we believe uh, that KSAP exists is because there's a lack of time and energy on the part of parents. Uh, describe the average day or afternoon. Um, average parent may pro probably get home 5, 30, 6 o'clock. You have your household chores, fix dinner, uh, tend to some business, home business, uh, cook meals, spend a little time with your family, oversee homework, and then to try to work on college applications, uh, essays, and prepare for uh, standardized tests, it's a, it's a challenge. It's enormous and it's so true. And so parents and students only have so much time in the day. 24 hours is all that's allotted to us. And with all that is already going on, as you said, with work and school, it's challenging to get it in. And, uh, and, and I feel so sorry for particularly those seniors. The seniors are trying to take exams, standardize exams, keep up with the schoolwork, all of the activities, just an enormous weight on them. And so our job is to make it a little bit easier to give deadlines for the parents, deadlines for the students, and then to help them in any part of the process that uh, we possibly can. So that's why we exist. So one of the questions we want to share with you or talk about is why colleges exist, or what colleges want, rather, okay? And what colleges want are students that fit into the school's culture, you know? Um, there are schools, each school has its own culture, you know. Some schools are known as community service schools, some schools are known as uh, really, really rigid academic schools, some schools are known as entrepreneurial schools, some schools are known as party schools, right? So, <laughs> you know, so, so colleges and universities are trying to uh, staff a basketball team, so to speak, to use an analogy. They're looking to find a uh, a LeBron James, looking to find a uh, Kobe Bryant, looking to find a uh, these individuals of the school. And then there are the apparent gaps that they want to fill with students. And yes. so gaps, what would you say uh, about the gaps? Some gaps may be under uh, represented fields of study that mm -hmm. they possibly have. Sure. Some departments may not have enough students mm -hmm. to continue um, and with the mission that they're projecting their um, research fundings and, and things like that depend on the amount of students that are up, uh, in that coursework. Sure, sure, absolutely. So they're looking for students who can fill the gaps, but also they're looking for students who will persist and graduate. They're looking for those students who will come back year after year. They will be academically engaged as well as socially engaged. And if they do that, there's a pretty good chance that they will persist and graduate. So they're looking for that. Then they're looking for uh, students who will inquire, acquire gainful employment. That's important. Yes. Because uh, they want those students to graduate, get good jobs, and then mm -hmm. become what? Mm -hmm. Alumnus. Alumnus mm -hmm. who actually support the school, yes. right? That's what it's all about. Yes. And, uh, and so that's what they're looking for. And, and of course, our alma mater uh, graduated, what, um, we had um, Philip Michael Thomas went there. Uh, who else went there? Take Six went oh, there. Six went there. Uh, Brian McKnight went there. Uh, who else? Uh, he was on That's My Mama. Clifton Davis went there, and any number of people. And so not only do they want high-profile individuals, but they want good alumnus who will return to the school and give money, support, and promotion, et cetera. And I think about uh, Tom Joyner and his foundation. Tom Joyner went to Tuskegee, Tuskegee. Uh, Institute or University now, and Tuskegee uh, partners with uh, Tom Joyner's foundation Every year he does a cruise, and it's called, uh, what is it called, partying for a cause or cruising for a cause, and he gives significant amounts of uh, his return on that cruise to uh, that school and other HBCU. So it's uh, wonderful to see uh, alumnus who are involved in that process. So that's what colleges want. So 
how do colleges understand if you fit the bill or not? In other words, uh, what's the evidence? What's the support? And that's the student profile. You know, that's exactly. what you... Some, some schools are looking for ninth to 12th. Some are looking 10th to 12th. Mm -hmm. Depends on the region you're in. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking to see if you took uh, challenging classes. Okay. Um, and most schools uh, base your grades off of your school, not the school, not the region or nationally. Whatever your school offers, they want to see that you're engaged in taking the most challenging courses possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, course rigor is certainly important. And particularly the most selective schools are looking at that kind yes. of thing. So, and the interesting thing about uh, these uh, colleges and universities is they actually have regional admissions persons, yes. right? who uh, actually know what's going on in that particular region and is uh, comparing you and contrasting you with others from that region and also your school, okay? Then the next thing is uh, extracurricular activities. They wanna know what kinds of clubs you were involved in. Did you take leadership positions in those yes. clubs? Uh, what uh, uh, sports activities, if, if, if anything? What did you do uh, outside of school? Um, were you involved in community service? Did you do any volunteer work? Did you do missions travel? Uh, things such as that, and uh, so very important. Then also a very important thing, particularly in this day and age of social media, is your reputation. Do you have a good reputation? And, uh, you know, just like employers check Facebook pages and social media, so do colleges and universities exactly. today. You know, because ultimately, again, you remember, they want students who will persist, you know, in other words, they will make it through. And then they also want students who will have a good reputation as alumnus, okay? So, uh, so reputation's important, references are important. Then uh, we talked about community service. Test scores, SAT and ACT test scores are important. And what is the average, uh, the selective schools? What, are, what kind of SAT scores are they looking for these days? In reading, and mathematics, they're looking over 700. Okay, so, but combined, SAT? Uh, overall, 2,200. Rigorous requirements. And the application process, because all of schools are particularly looking for the same information. There may be some schools who may want additional information, but that will be also on the common app. But your name, address, telephone number, email address, grades, test scores, all schools are going to want that. Also get asked a lot of times about a little bit about your background, your parents' education, uh, and some interesting things and uh, some of those things that they're looking at. And oftentimes they're interested uh, in whether or not you're a first generation college student too. And That's I know that there is big there, factor. Yeah, there's some money uh, also merit money and other kinds of money available for that too. So, so we have the application and then also the... wanted uh, to note that the California schools, state schools, um, do not use the common application. They have their own application which is due in November. Okay, November each year. Okay. In November each year. So, uh, so how about the uh, common app? When is, when is that due? Um, common app has no particular due date, but each school will have its own due date, usually January. Okay. Um, this is the earliest, but each school would on, once you select that school, it will give you its due date. Okay, very good. So uh, we have the application, obviously, and then personal statements. Personal statements are huge because huge. the personal statements tell the institution who you are. They get a lot of information from the, uh, from the quantitative, uh, and that is the test scores and your GPA, but, but, but there are qualitative things that they can only know from you sharing, so that's an important part of the evidence in the student profile. So academic grades, extracurricular activities, your reputation, uh, community service, test scores, application, personal statement, and other essays as are applicable, and many of them have supplemental sections. Interview people um, long distance. Particular area to do a face-to-face -face interview as well. So, uh, but personal statements are important as well as preparation for these interviews yes. when they occur, okay? So, so it's important that a, an individual uh, who plans to go to college begin building a stellar profile. 
And it, 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 and it really, uh, what we believe that you should start in the eighth, uh, sixth or seventh grade, right? Exactly. Okay. And it makes a big difference because if you decide in the ninth grade, in the tenth grade, there's just not a lot of time, right? It's, it's not enough time. Um, the transition from, from middle school to high school is an easy transition. Transition from high school to college is a lot more complex. It's a great jump. Mm -hmm. The writing, the reading, the coursework can sometimes overwhelm you if you're not preparing yourself early for the rigor of what college can bring. Okay, very good. So uh, again, we suggest uh, grades six, uh, that you really start getting prepared. And so what we suggest uh, is that you, one, take uh, English and algebra, uh, one, as soon as possible, two, take a language other than English, because uh, many of the schools are looking for a, a second language and uh, one or two years. Uh, three, uh, get involved in summer courses at the community colleges and also leadership roles in, uh, in your clubs and so forth. And that's so important. That's what we suggest that you do from sixth to eighth grade. Then the ninth grade, now you're in high school and you're beginning to take uh, certain courses that are necessary to get into these higher education institutions. In the state of California, we have what are called A through G uh, requirements, and particularly for the UC and the CSU uh, admissions. And these A through G requirements are, um, are uh, let's see, history, math, performing arts, visual arts, science, and foreign language. Those are the A through Gs. But in the ninth grade, uh, it is recommended that you take Algebra 1, Geometry, AP, Honors, and a foreign language. Two, uh, during the ninth grade year, aim for A's in all of your classes. If you aim for A, if you get an A minus or B plus, then that's okay. But if you aim for a C, you're in trouble, okay? So focus on your homework, develop good social skills, social and once skills. again, mm -hmm. take summer courses. Uh, and I keep saying that each year because all summer, go to the movies or sleep all summer and watch television all summer, you know, or do social networking all summer. So they want to see that you got involved. There are summer programs at almost all of the colleges and universities across the country. And many uh, nonprofit organizations have them as well. And uh, so you want to make sure that you get your uh, students involved in uh, those programs. Uh, Stanford has a program, uh, EPGY, um, uh, program that uh, gifted students take part in. And uh, it, it uh, allows you to do uh, social studies tracks, uh, uh, social science tracks, uh, uh, STEM tracks, and so forth and so on. John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins has a summer program. Uh, the uh, UCs have summer programs. And so really there are summer programs all across the country. Yeah, the 10th uh, grade is so, uh, so vital. And we're suggesting that they take geometry and algebra, uh, take the history courses, uh, English courses, AP and honors course, and then uh, make sure that they take the PSAT uh, uh, test or exam. And why is that important? It gives you a chance to, to sit for a national exam to find out where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are early enough so that before you prepare for 11th grade SA, PSAT, where it counts as a merit for scholarship, and for preparation for the SAT. Mm -hmm. Also in the 10th grade, you need to start figuring out what colleges you're really interested in. Mm. Because that also makes, um, has factor into how many years of language, how many years of science, how many years of math you need to take. Um, your more selective school is gonna want an extra year of language. So two years. Three. Three years of life. Two years mandatory to graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. They want that third year to go to most selective schools and, and also a, thir a third or fourth year of math courses. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, once again, if you're in California, you have to take your A through G's, which is history, English, math. Programs in architecture. There's programs for literature, history. So whatever your child's interest, there's a summer program for it at 
a plenty of major universities, even a lot of the community college will have programs for young people. Just check them, check them, check them out, look, check online, um, keep your ear open, call schools, find out what are they offering. Okay, and, uh, and that's one of the things that we do too, is uh, the summer school search, uh, summer program search, in addition to other things that will help. Then in the 10th grade, again, we're 11th. suggesting, 11th grade, I'm sorry, we're suggesting that you take AP honors, uh, math and English, um, algebra two and advanced English, two, uh, take early assessment uh, program exam, uh, that's what we call the EAP for college level math and English placement. Then uh, register for AP exams uh, in the spring. Register for the SAT and ACT one month before the exam and then again participate in summer academics because they want to make sure that you're using your summer time wisely. And then in the 12th grade, the pressure is really on at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you're filling out applications and so forth, and you're writing for scholarships, writing essays. You want to make sure you complete the A through G's. And um, if your, a your EAP scores are low, then you want to make sure you address that by taking, uh, getting a tutor or practice, uh, practicing on your own. And then five, participate in academic summer program, volunteerism, and leadership roles. And every summer, really, uh, students should think in terms of getting into some summer program or and, some volunteer service. And visiting colleges. And visiting colleges, yes. Before your senior year begins. Trying to figure that out during your senior year is complex because you have so many other things going on. There's so many senior activities that you kind of want to have some things already done. You want to be finished with searching or narrow, narrowing, narrowing it down to your top three to five choices. Um, there are several hundred thousand colleges to choose from now. So you have to narrow things down to have a, a good handle on where you like to go, what's a good fit for you. Also, 11th grade, I, I believe to me it's the most important year of your college, of your high school experience for colleges. They will not have your 12th grade um, academic information when you start to apply. But they will have 11th grade and they want to see that you were strong in your 11th grade year, which gives a predictor to your performance of your 12th grade year. Okay, very good. So yeah, just extremely important that you build a stellar uh, profile uh, so that uh, they can choose you as opposed to the uh, millions of other students who are also graduating and looking yes. to get into the most selective colleges or perhaps one of the colleges that you selected. And, and you mentioned how important it is to know what college you want to go to. The interesting thing, um, there is research that says that if a student knows what they want to do as a freshman, then they will persist toward graduation and actually graduate, higher uh, uh, rates of graduation. So let's talk about dollars and cents, okay? Dollars and cents. Everybody wants to know uh, what does it cost? So the national average for college costs. A four-year public, the national average is 20,000. Four-year private, the national average is 42,000. And a four-year, what we call elite school, uh, Ivy League, Ivy League-like school, 56,000, okay? So if we look in uh, our own neighborhood at uh, Cal State uh, San Bernardino, uh, it's $13,248 roughly, okay? And then uh, University of California Riverside, $32,119 roughly. And that in our alma mater, uh, 26500 per year. These are all yearly figures. And then Stanford University, $52,884, which is just under the, uh, the national average for four-year elite schools. And so you can see that it costs a lot of money to go to school these days. And uh, over the years, it has increased and increased. Um, so you want to understand the numbers with regard to how you finance uh, one equation that helps you understand 
what you uh, can uh, uh, count on in terms of financial aid is this. It is what we call COA minus EFC equals your financial need. So the COA is the cost of attendance, how much it costs to go to school. So that includes tuition, room and board, fees, uh, books, travel, transportation, etc. Minus family expected contribution, that's the EFC, equals your financial need, okay? So uh, the other thing we uh, have to throw into this equation is the adjusted gross income. I can't remember what line that's on on the uh, 1040 form, but it's on there. And then the EFC is based upon the AGI and the number of uh, dependent children, all right? So once we put in that cost of attendance, subtract the family expected contribution, in other words, how much they expect your family to pay toward your education, then you have your financial need. And so, for instance, if a person makes, uh, let's say, uh, $100,000, the family makes $100,000 a year, then um, and they have one dependent child, then that, um, then that um, family, uh, expected family contribution would be $18,680. And if they have two dependents, it goes down by uh, about $1,000, $17,000. Three dependents, $16,000. Four dependents, $14,000. So you can see how that works. And uh, if a person makes a little less, then they pay a little less. They make more, they pay more in the EFC. And so it, it gets a little more complicated, so we do a workshop specifically on financial aid. But just wanted to go over some of the numbers because many parents and students don't know how you arrive at that EFC. And basically that EFC is the cost of attendance minus your adjusted gross income with consideration of those uh, dependents. So ways to pay for college. Ways to pay for college, need-based. Need-based. Need-based scholarships. Lots of need-based scholarships. Okay, tons of need-based scholarships because they realize that some of the brightest, wisest, and most talented uh, uh, students don't often come from, uh, don't always come from uh, affluent homes. So they're need-based uh, uh, scholarships. Then they're merit-based scholarships, just based on uh, SAT scores or GPA or combination thereof. Then there are other kinds of scholarships. Sure, there's uh, athletic scholarship, leadership sco scholarships, and such. Okay, and uh, you can get scholarships for uh, being in the band, being a mascot, uh, being uh, on dance team, a drill team. So there are all kinds of uh, scholarships and ways to fund your education, and and we're involved in uh, nominating for a few. Uh, of these uh, organizations. For instance, uh, the Posse Foundation, we, we nominate students uh, from this region uh, for the Posse Scholarship. And the Posse Scholarship has uh, certain schools in it, particularly 12 schools in this uh, area. And then there are also uh, work-study programs that you can uh, work your way uh, through schools with a limited amount of hours. I know when I was in school, I. I worked uh, anywhere from uh, 12 to 16 hours a week. How about you? Same. About the same. And, and that gave me some good pocket change to buy some of the things that I needed. Then there's also state funding. And here in California, we have what's called the Cal Grant. And uh, nationally, there is the uh, Pell Grant. And the Pell Grant, uh, the national average for Pell Grant is about uh, $5,700. And then there are the dreadful and disgusting uh, student loans, and that we discourage, uh, you know, because we don't want our students to begin their lives in debt. Uh, it was uh, interesting, uh, uh, our president, Barack Obama, is one of the youngest presidents we've had in some time, uh, but we found that when he got in office, he said that he had just finished paying off his student loans. And so we know that this is a debt, this is a burden that students carry with them for many, many years. And so we want to help students find money. And there's tons of money available. We just have to find it. Yes. It's a, a lot of money is unclaimed every year. Every year, every year. Okay? So uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, the CAPS, uh, KSAP solutions. In other words, what do we do? 
How do we help students? We have several options and areas of help for helping our students get to college, prepare for college, and find, have access to funds to pay for college. Okay, so we do things like what, the mission search. So if you want to get mission experience, and so your profile has this glaring hole in it, and you need some mission work, we help you find mission opportunities. Personal statement assistant, we said how important that is, so we actually help you craft that, okay? And then there is your resume, your profile compilation, how to put that together, how to put your brag book together, so everything is in order, and it helps you really fill out your applications better, how to put uh, your resume together, that's so important. Then there are the summer program. Uh, in fact, I had a, uh, a parent call last week or the week before asking about uh, summer programs. She knew it was late, but really wanted her two daughters to be involved in the summer program. Then there are workshops and seminars like financial aid, uh, other workshops on how to prepare a resume, how to uh, prepare uh, your, um, your, um, your profile how to uh, interview, so all kinds of workshops we do. Then scholarship recommendations, we talked about that earlier. Uh, application review, you fill out the, 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 the application and we review it to see uh, what's there. And uh, then there's a career assessment, um, college choice consultation, uh, community service and volunteer outreach, essay review. Do you know that 10 people should see your essay before your yes. essay is turned in or your personal statement, 10 people. And so that's very important. Financial aid award letter review. Uh, some parents and students don't know how to interpret, how to understand that, so we help them. High school curriculum review, we help with that. Your profile for your high school, we help with that. But two of the most important things that we do are the scholarship search, okay, that, that helps a student match up with potential scholarships. There are uh, Gates Millennium Scholarships out there. Uh, we talked about the Posse Foundation Scholarships. And incidentally, the Gates Scholarship is a great scholarship because it will fund you from your bachelor's all the way through your doctorate, okay? That's okay. what, nearly a quarter million dollars in financial aid? Yes. Yeah, that's wonderful. And then, of course, we mentioned the Posse Scholarship, and the Posse Scholarship play, pays all of, uh, all of your tuition, but not your room and board, okay? And uh, so that's great. And uh, so there are all kinds of yes. scholarship opportunities out there, and we want to match students with that. Then you look at... Uh, we all, you also talked about summer programs. Yes. A lot of summer programs have a cost to them. Yes. But we have resources to help get funding for summer programs. Absolutely. Okay. And then uh, one of the most important things we do is the profile assessment. Profile okay. assessment. So the profile assessment is so important because that takes a student wherever they are, uh, the ninth grade, the 10th grade, the 11th grade, 12th grade, and we look at their profile and we assess it and we look at their academics. In other words, the quantitative uh, stuff and the qualitative data, the grades and the GPA and the standardized scores and the academic awards and uh, the letters of rec uh, recommendation. We look at all of that. Then we look at the writing, analysis of the writing, the writing grade level, the ease of reading and grammar, etc. We look at that. Then extracurricular. What are you involved in inside the classroom, outside of the classroom, your work, your volunteerism? What clubs have you led? What clubs have you established or originated? Then we look at the personal. Uh, these are, uh, this information is drawn from letters of recommendation, interviews, essays, and other facets that will help develop the snapshot of the student. So, exactly. uh, and so it's so important because we uh, look through the lens of admissions advisors and admissions officers and help you understand how they see you, how they would see you. And so those are the uh, services, premier services that uh, we have and that we'd like to offer to you and your students. And we want to ask you and encourage you to follow us on Twitter and follow us on Facebook. You can, uh, of course, go to our website. Uh, it's uh, www. Uh, KSAP or CASAP 2020.com and on Facebook we're KSAP 2020 and on Twitter we're KSAP 2020 and we love to answer your questions you can call us uh, you can write us 
and we would be happy to speak with you. If you'd like to call us, you can reach us at 888-461-5558. That's 888-461-5558. And we're so excited about helping you and assisting you and helping your student reach their educational goals. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. God bless.